a million dollar question. If we all, if we had a set formula for writing great screenplays, we'd never write a bad one. Uh, but I think the most important thing is a good, compelling story. Um, pretty much everything else can be taught uh, within reason, you know. But uh, you, you can be taught how to format. You can be taught how to play on words. You can all oh, tons of tip, tips and techniques that you can be taught, but if you don't have that great compelling story to begin with, uh, nothing else matters. It can be a textbook screenplay, but if the story's not compelling and entertaining, uh, you don't really have anything. And I know that's hard for a lot of people to hear because they want to be a screenwriter, but uh, they neglect to uh, acknowledge the fact that they don't have the ability to come up with a, a good, compelling story. Um, why do you think so many screenplays and movies are written uh, about, you know, based on novels and art, it, stories that already exist because they're good, compelling stories and these movies go on to be big hits because the writer had a great, compelling story to start with. So if you're going to be an original screenwriter, you're going to have to have the ability to come up with a great story. And that's the secret to writing a, gr a great screenplay. Stories are everywhere. Uh, it's like looking for anything else. If you're out looking for a great story, you'll, you'll find one. If you're not out looking for that great story, you're probably not going to find it. You may get lucky and uh, just be presented with a great story, but by and large, you, you have to be out and about looking for great stories. Uh, people have this idea of a writer being cooped up in their house, a uh, very reclusive kind of person, but if you're going to be coming up with great stories, you have to be out experiencing life, and you have to watch how people interact with each other, how they react to certain situations. Um, take, for example, I was at a wedding reception, and my cousin, who is Native American, has uh, teenage daughters who were starting middle school and high school, and we were talking about where they were going to be going to school. And probably three hours later, a story began to emerge about a young Native American girl who wanted to study martial art. And I, that, I developed that screenplay. Um, the conversation wasn't about martial arts or anything such thing. It was just about her girls starting school. But um, from that, the only thing I took from that conversation was the main character was Native American and the beginning of the story was at the beginning of the school year. So you have to be able to take an experience and extract what's useful out of it. I always like to quote by Bruce Lee, accept what is useful, reject what is useless, and add essentially what is your own. Um, and a great story is like a piece of gossip, you know. How does gossip get to be blown out of proportion? You know, in the morning somebody twists their ankle by the end of the day, they're in the hospital having surgery. You know, it's uh, the story after it goes through so many people just gets expanded. If you have a clear beginning, middle, and end, that's what you have to start with. And even though the story may be small, between the beginning and the, and the middle, you just start adding stuff and expanding. You see what works and what doesn't work. It's, it's like putting a puzzle together. You, you know, you put a puzzle together, you put the outside, and then you find these pieces and it kind of all comes together. You have these three points and you know, I'm starting here, I need to get to my midpoint, and you just add in what you need. You just write different scenes to take your characters from the beginning to the midpoint and that's going to give you a foundation to take this group of characters that you've got the reader or the person watching the film you, you, you they've got to know those characters and that gives you a foundation 
to take these characters to this conclusion that you came up with. So when you're developing the story, you start with a beginning, middle, and end, and you just add what works in in between these three points and the story just gets expanded until it becomes a 90 to 120 page screenplay. The secret to developing a great character is uh, you have to keep in mind that you have to develop the character within the context of the story. The story comes first. You have the story in mind and you have to decide what kind of character is best suited to tell the story. Okay, your main characters, which usually in an average screenplay you're going to have, I would say two to six main characters. Uh, four usually being the easiest to work with, but you'll have two to six main characters and they'll merge really quickly. And they're going to be, your characters are going to be what you're using to tell the story and then you will have these main characters and then you'll develop characters to assist them in telling this story you develop. Um, I do something called a character chart and it's just I'm sure other screenwriters do something similar uh, but what I do for a character chart each main character and the uh, major supporting characters I have a sheet of paper at the top. I write that character's physical description. Uh, blonde hair, blue eyes, 120 pounds, uh, short curly hair, if they wear glasses, you know, wh whatever their physical description is. Then I write their personality. If they're a gravelly voice drill sergeant or a shy, timid 12-year-old, I write that down. Whatever their personality is, uh, you know, and if they have a pet peeve or something, you, whatever you think is important about their personality, you can write in there. And then below that, you write what their role in the screenplay is, what part of the story they're going to be telling. And you also, in that, I write their relationship to other characters. Now, the main characters, writing the relationship to each other is, you know, kind of you can or you can or you know that it's up to you but your supporting characters you'll write how they relate to the main characters like I have a character Reuben Brown uh, I put he's the best friend of Abby Mitchell who is the main character and he's also the uh, sister of Kimmy or excuse me the brother of Kimmy who is Abby's other best friend, and these three are more like siblings rather than uh, lifelong friends. So uh, you write all that kind of stuff down, and this keeps you on track. As you're writing for that character, it gives you a mental picture with a physical description. You have a mental picture in their head. You know their personality, so you know how they're going to react in certain situations and how they're going to react with other people. You know, you have a good idea of what part of the story they're going to be telling and their relationship to the other characters. So, uh, and the character chart's for your benefit. Nobody's going to know you had this character chart unless you tell them. Uh, but all they'll see is this rich character you've developed. But you have to develop the characters within the context of the story, and you, you just have to think what character is best suited for telling the story or whatever part of the story. If you have to have a bus driver, you think in your mind what, what the bus driver is going to be like, physical description, personality, and how he relates to the other characters and his uh, role within the screenplay. Um, now if you're writing for television, um, you'll be, you have to develop really rich characters. Even if you're writing a pilot, you have to write characters that somebody can read that screenplay and, and visualize how this group of characters is going to be able to tell 12 short 30 minute stories. If it's going to be on one season, that's 12 weeks. So. Um, 
they have to be really rich and it's not opposite of writing for a feature film it's more like a mirror image you have to have a group of characters and you have to write 12 well if you're writing a pilot you'll write 12 to 13 short 30 minute stories around this group of characters and your characters have to be really rich a lot of people develop this real rich character and try to write a story around the character and that's kind of difficult uh, some people may may work better that way but I think what's more important is to have a good compelling story to place this rich character in you have to have a story first and then you have to develop the character even if it's for television uh, let's say you're writing episode six well you have these this group of characters and you have this story so what you do is you go to this group of characters and figure out which characters would be best to tell episode six so you have six or eight uh, characters to work with and and you can kind of uh, it kind of works out good to have good rich characters when you're writing for television because this group of characters has to tell 12 different stories uh, but the character the only thing I view as a rule is the character has to be the best suited to tell the story uh, even if it's an animated character like a dinosaur you have to develop that character to tell your story